Yes I, greetings and love my people about the Crops Not Shops group. It's a group dedicated to guerrilla gardening people's uh, gardens into allotment plots. Helping them uh, grow food, sharing seeds, sharing crops and sharing knowledge. And we want to turn allotment plots into food bases that feed the wider, wider community with the nettle soup. We're promoting plants, seed sharing, knowledge sharing and uh, allotment growing. You know, techniques, articles, so on, yeah? We don't want any division, we want unity. We're on a mission and that mission is that. We are not going to be diverted from it, yeah? We need unity in this time, unity, pure unity, you understand? I love you, there's people here that have great ethics, and there's people on here who just want to know how to grow, grow food, yeah, that's it, yeah, I love you, please don't let anything divert this mission, something very powerful, you know, please. Yes, I greetings and love my people, crops not shops family. Hello, how are you doing? Ah, oh, give thanks for all the lovely support and the vibes and everyone getting outside and growing some food and you know sharing what we have. Right, so I have here all of this stuff has to go. It's all for free. We need to get it in the ground. There's no point in our crops being uh, and our seeds sitting around. So we've got some spinach, some leeks, some courgette, some Japanese Shumei agricultural organic tomatoes. There's loads of kale, Brussels sprouts. You've got calendula seeds and um, an African tarragon seed as well. So these are for anyone who wants to come and pick them up. You can grab them for our allotments or um, just message the page and we'll meet. We're arranged to meet somewhere. So let's get this out, let's get this food growing guys. It's all got to go. Let me know, bless. Rastafari. I'll show you the work we've been doing. We've got this bed along here. And um, it was chest deep in snowberries and sumac and weeds. And we've dug all them out. But you can see where we've left it. It's full of rocks and bricks and roots and logs and pretty gross so sieving by hand uh, that's what we've done so far anyway with this beauty and if I just show you look at this Whoa. gold yeah it's been raking so it's therapeutic look how soft that soil is beautiful got all the bind weeds out Spinach in, tomatoes going at the back. Rocking it, boy. Crops not shot. Yes, I. Blessed, my people. Live on the Crops Not Shops page. There we go. We are building a raised bed right now for a lady who uh, is in a wheelchair. So, there we are, come to help out, after this one we're going to go to another house and we're going to change our garden into a plot as well. So we're going move forward with the movement, forward with the vibes, and Dave's got his Japanese chop saw out. Yeah anyway, mate, that's us for the day, hope you're all well. Love you. Alright, so here we are with the brassica beds. I've just finished putting all of this cover on here. Um, I've sort of had to make it up as I go along a little bit. It's all made out of scavenged things, but it's very important for brassica beds to have a very heavy amount of cover. Um, just because the, the slugs and snails will go for it, the cabbage white moth, the cabbage white butterfly, uh, birds, snails, slugs, everything goes for brassicas, so you're going to want to cover them completely. Um, so this has all pretty much just been made out of um, out of scavenged material, really. This is some sort of like you know high high gauge um, like fencing 
wire fencing or whatever. But basically it's, it's worked out quite well because it means that if you do it in three pieces, you can lift it up and still have the other two pieces down there, you see that? And the felt just goes straight over the top. Pins on those bits where I've cut the bottoms off, they pin into the ground and it keeps everything nice and secure in there. Um, but I've used fleece instead of the sort of the plastic mesh just because I'm hoping that these all sort of um, these will double up as as, uh, as winter beds as well so they'll keep the frost off and the warmth in. Um, but yeah, spinach and kale's in, protected. With a reasonably cheap idea for um, instead instead of having to go out and buy all your cloches and your polytunnels and all your bits and bobs like that. But, um, yeah, cabbage will go in there soon, but I'll keep so the So these are the carrots, little baby carrots that we stored from last year that didn't really uh, didn't really come to uh, anything big enough to harvest last year. And we've stored them in sand. There's a video for this on the Instagram actually, but we've stored them in sand. These are purple ones, and they're already raring to grow. Raring to grow. <laughs> But yeah, so they're already raring to grow, like. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw them, take them out of the sand, throw them in a little bit of water, and just wash them off and get anything else, like any of the little dirty bits of stuff, any sort of stuff that's on the sand or whatever. Just get that off, give them a little soap, and then you can just make a little hole in your bed. So I'm going to stick them over here with the ones that are already going. These ones we've did a, did a couple of a uh, couple of weeks earlier, but I'm going to finish off this bed with those. So you just want to put a little hole in the ground, like that one, and just drop it straight in there. Cover them up, give them a water and they're good to go.